This is one of a series of films dealing with sex and marital counseling. The goal of these programs is to increase your powers of observation and counseling skills. We are about to observe an initial sex counseling session with a young wife. The problem presented by Mrs. Martin is frequently encountered by physicians and counselors. As we do in each of these films, following the interview, we will have a replay analysis of interview tactics and interaction dynamics. Uh, your name is uh, Mrs. Martin, is that right? That's correct. And your first name is? Linda. May I call you Linda? Oh, yes, of course. All right. How old are you, Linda? I'm 26. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're married to? Your Bob. husband's first name is? Bob. Bob. Robert, right. but I call him Bob. Okay. How long have you been married? Uh, four years. And do you have some children? Yes, we have two. Two girls. Okay. What does Bob do? He's a lawyer. I see. I see. Well, now, Linda, tell me, how did you happen to come to see me? What, uh, what's the difficulty facing you? Well, it's, um, I guess the problem is sexual. Mm -hmm. I, um, uh, went to see our uh, minister for our local church, and he suggested I get uh, some professional help, because I don't n quite know what to do about it. Um, how, uh, how did you feel coming in today to, uh, to talk about it? How do you feel being here? Well, I feel like it's really a necessity, and I really want to get help, and I really want to find out what's causing these problems, but mm -hmm. I, I have to admit I'm a little nervous, I guess. Okay, okay. Well, try and tell me, for starters, if you can, what is the current uh, dilemma? What's going on that troubles you? Well, I'm afraid uh, that I might be frigid. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just don't seem to be able to respond the same way I used to. I see. I'm sorry. Well, now, when did you first notice this? What? Tell me the story. About it. Well, I don't know. It didn't. Uh, it didn't happen all at once. It, you know, it was happened over time. Mm -hmm. um, and what brings it to uh, your attention now? Well, I, I, quite frankly, I've just had it. Uh, we're fighting a lot now. We're not talking. Um, we don't seem to be able to get to the root of the problem, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm frightened. And did a specific fight occur with you and uh, Well, we've uh, had Bob? several, but uh, uh, recently I, Bob told me that I've got problems and I should do something about it. I and I agree with him. I, I feel like I'm, I've reached the point where I've got to have help. Okay. Now tell me, um, you say it's been going on for some time. Can you uh, elaborate on this and exactly tell me what you mean by being frigid, as you call it? Well, I, I don't have climaxes anymore at all. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like uh, we go to bed together, and um, I feel that he wants, uh, wants me or wants uh, sex. And I feel like I'm just submitting now, that I'm not, I'm not giving anything or getting anything. And, um, it's a very frustrating experience. Uh, it's like, oh, you know, we watch television all night or play with the kids. <laughs> then we go to bed, and it's like a, mm, you know, now it's time for sex. And uh, I don't know. I just want it to be uh, good like it used to be or open and, uh, well, romantic, I guess. <laughs> yes. Well, now, have you uh, been feeling, what, very depressed and, and uh, upset, guilty about it in some sense? Yeah, our marriage is it's a good marriage mm -hmm. in, in most ways. And I work very hard to make, you know, our home a special place. You know, different than, than most people's marriages seem to me. A little dull, a little... Uh, uh, I think women get careless about the way they look. And I, I try not to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I want things to be really nice. And, and um, yet you can't respond when you want to. No. And you're not having your climax. I see. Now, you, you're not having a climax during intercourse itself? Is this your concern? That's right. Uh, does this mean you have climax or orgasm uh, with, outside of intercourse? Yes, sometimes. You have had this in the past? Yes. Roughly how long ago are we talking about? Well, in the beginning of our marriage, I, I did uh, 
with intercourse. You were I responsive usually, and satisfied yes. then? Yes. Okay. I felt like uh, it was easy, giving and, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. responding. Um, since then, no. But well, something must have happened somewhere along the line. Can well, we had two children, and All right. that takes uh, what my happened whole then? day, uh, you know. I'm busy with them going to the park. I take them swimming. And, mm -hmm. of course, his practice has increased. He's, well, he's home later and later every night, I guess. He's a busy, uh, go-getting kind of oh, yes. lawyer, you said? Oh, very that outgoing, mm -hmm. very, uh, very good in arguments, which is, which is pretty depressing because uh, when we have these fights, you know, he goes point by point where this is my problem. And uh, How do you feel about I, that? I, I can't um, argue with him. I think he's right. Oh, you agree with him? Well, I can't disagree. Uh, or maybe that's just because he's a lawyer and he's good at it. I don't know. And you're not quite sure how this makes you feel at some gut level? Uh, yeah. Except yeah. upset. I mean, we have an argument of any kind mm -hmm. before, we, say, before we go to bed. It, say it's over a household matter or something. He'll put me down, you know, one point after the other and... Uh, and what do you do, kind of grin and bear it or swallow your pride? Sometimes, what, what? most of the time. Sometimes I get angry. Mm -hmm. And then we go to bed and I, you know. Okay. Are there any other stresses on the marriage outside of this particular one at this time? Not really. As I say, uh, on the whole, it's, it's a good marriage. Okay. And I want to keep it that way. Okay. Now let's, let's go back <laughs> into the past a bit. How did you happen to, uh, for example, meet Bob? Tell me about courting and getting married, if you can. Oh. Uh, we met at a fraternity party. I was a senior in college. He mm -hmm. was a, a junior in law school. And, uh, oh, he was, I was attracted to him right away. What attracted you? What kind oh, of... he's so outgoing and vivacious and different, I found, than most men. He mm -hmm. was sensitive, too. And I was kind of quiet and reserved, and he sensed that I was uh, feminine, and he thought I was pretty. And uh, then we began to talk about each other, and I was able to talk to him about myself the way I've never been able to talk to anybody. Okay. And the same for him. And, and your sexual pattern during courtship, before you got married, what was it like? What did you do, and how did you, how'd you react? Well, in the beginning, it was uh, kissing, necking, mm -hmm. you know, petting, and... Uh, were you I, troubled by any of your responses at, at no, that time? No, no. I know that I felt more sexually attracted to him than anyone I ever had. And mm -hmm. I really wanted to uh, to have sex with Bob. Uh, then after we were engaged, I did. I, I felt secure, and, uh, and uh, I did. You had intercourse, and your response to that before you got married was what? It was good. I, every now and then I felt a little uncomfortable. I mean, we'd be at his apartment, and I'd be afraid maybe a friend would come over. Mm -hmm. I feel a little discomfort. You know, I was relieved uh, after the wedding. Okay. Were there any pressures to get married that you were going through at that time? Oh, not particularly. Uh, I know I wanted to be married. About Nothing out of the age. ordinary. No, no. Okay. And the honeymoon, what was it like? How did you get along at that? It was very nice. Uh, toward the end of it, uh, there was a little bit of a, a feeling of, uh, I guess we were exhausted mm -hmm. and tired, and we'd been together solidly, you know, like for two weeks yeah. for the first time. I mean, with school and other pressures, we hadn't been together that much. So uh, <clears throat> a little bit of a feeling of what have I done and where do we go now, and, but uh, it was good. And Enjoy. after you got into the marriage routine, you had your children pretty quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Born right away, I guess. Yes, the first child was born about uh, nine months, um, excuse me, <laughs> a year later. Okay. And that's some sign of change as far as you can recall. You got tied up in the mother scene, and yeah. you got tied up in the career. I knew that would happen. I kind of a drifting. That. And then you, you did. Mm -hmm. I expected that to be difficult. That's why I worked pretty hard at keeping the household mm -hmm. and more of an atmosphere of, of maintaining the, the feeling of romance. I try okay. to, but uh, it's... Didn't work out the no. way you want. Okay. Now let's go further back into the past, if I can, for a moment. Tell me, what kind of a marriage do you come from? How did your parents get along? Very well. There were no 
uh, fights were they, uh, that were obvious anyway. Were they uh, demonstrative in front of you? Did they show affection? Not particularly. My father was a little more demonstrative mm -hmm. than uh, my mother, but... Uh, mother was pretty reserved. Yes. Right? Yes, she is. Okay. What, um, let's call them vibrations, what, what vibrations might you have gotten concerning sex as you were growing up as a child? What kind of sex education atmosphere did you go through? Well, as far as education, I had none. <laughs> My mother mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to talk about sex at all. But uh, as far as dating, um, she was pretty rigid about, you know, even when I was very young, she would tell me, you know, you shouldn't kiss boys. They'll think badly of you. Um, oh, I see. If don't, uh, don't go out in a car. A don't slight put down. So yeah. Well, yeah. Be careful. That, it was a cautiousness. You know. Okay. Okay. Now, when, uh, if you can, uh, what was her mother, your mother's reaction, for example, when you started your period, uh, begin, beginning menstruation? How, how did that go? Oh, I started when I was very young, mm -hmm. before uh, I knew anything about it. Yes. And I, I called my mother and I said, Mother, I'm dying. I have a terrible disease. And she laughed and she explained the whole thing to me. She gave me some books about it. I see. But nothing about... Uh, but that was about but, the extent of her active uh, education, yeah, shall we say. flowers, pollination. That kind of birds <laughs> and the like bees. She was huh? a gardener. She liked to garden. So she would talk about those things, but not people. Okay. Now, as you were growing through teenage years, and you developed a figure and all this and became interested in boys, how did you respond to your own growth as a, uh, growing into a woman? How did you respond to that? I really enjoyed it. I, um, I was sort of chubby when I was younger, and mm -hmm. kind of plain, I thought, anyway. And I began to uh, slim down at about 13, and mm -hmm. my father noticed it, told me I was getting pretty, and uh, boys liked me, how, how I enjoyed do you see it. Your, how do you see yourself these days? Well, I, I know I'm an attractive woman, um, but I don't feel that way with Bob anymore. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's the problem. I even worry that maybe he would be interested in some other woman. I. Has this really come up? Uh, no, not really. It's just that I feel like if I can't respond to him the way I should, that it, he may get interested in someone else. Right. Okay, now, thus far we understand that you and Bob got, you know, busy and drifted apart and didn't have that much time to get to know each other uh, intimately in some sense, at some level. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. And the uh, old days were a little bit negative about, about sex. Mother kind of didn't oh, approve yes. about That's right. being sexual. It was implied in some way. That's right. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Now, take me to the present day. What goes on today, these days, concerning when romance and sex are in the air? What, what occurs? Paint a word picture for me, if you can. Nothing. <laughs> How's that? Well, as I say, we spend the evening with the kids. After we get the kids to bed, mm -hmm. he's usually very tired. He watches television. What's going on in his mind if it's going to be sex? What, what, do you, what do you think he thinks? He gives me a look, you know. Okay. And raises what, his eyebrow. And your response is what? Well, it used to be, uh, it used to, he didn't just give me a look. I mean, okay. he would touch me, he would tell me I look nice, or he would do something to make me really feel that way. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if, if it's just going to be, you know, He gives you the look, with, he gives you the look, and what goes on inside you? I think, oh, here it comes. <laughs> And I want, you know, I don't, I want to express myself that way. Yes. And show him that I feel that way. And I try to, you know, when we get to the bedroom, I try to open myself up that way and, and relax. And I'm telling myself to relax and relax. But it's not the same. I mean, I don't feel Do you, uh, that he appreciates me, really. When, when you say, here we go again kind of thing with the sexual thing, what do you expect's going to happen? Is it you kind of frowned and you looked a little uncomfortable? Is it? Well, it's just going to be gotten over with, and I'm going to be left feeling so you may expect unattractive and uh, unsatisfied. Yeah. So you're caught wanting it to be good, but expecting it to be bad. Is that right? Yeah. And what? Then you tell yourself, "I've got to relax. I've got to relax," which doesn't work. No. Hmm? Okay. So then you go ahead and get it over with, yeah. right? 
which makes me feel very bad. I, I sometimes cry myself to sleep, frankly, afterwards. Well, where did you get the impression you were frigid? How did you happen to use that label? Well, <laughs> from reading, and then I know in one of our arguments, Bob said I was frigid, and he said, well, all my friends think you're so attractive and so sexy, but you're not really, which I... But you have had climaxes, you are yes. orgastic, and you have been in the past in better settings, correct? Yes, that's right. Well, that doesn't qualify you for being frigid. Well, it's been a long time, though. I mean, it's okay. You can't, you can't become frigid. No, you really can't. Not if you've been orgastic. It's a bad term, okay? So leave it in quotes, you know, take it off wherever you're wearing it and give it to someone else, all right? Can you do that Good. for yourself, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not frigid. You, you do have some sexual dysfunction. You're not responding as you'd like to. Fair enough. I'll agree to that. But you're not frigid, okay? Now, let's summarize the situation and see what we can do on the whole thing, all right? <clears throat> First of all, I think you have to appreciate that you've had negative conditioning from the past. And this seems to affect you right now. Yeah, I guess you could call it. You're negative. not entirely comfortable. Yeah. Right? Secondly, you've got to be able to explore this communications distance with Bob in some way. We've got to bring him in and see how the two of you can deal with this thing as a unit and not as just you as your problem. Right? So you think it's both of us, both of our problems? Sure. <laughs> sure. That's really. What do you think? Of it? Well, yeah. yes, frankly, it takes two. It takes two to yeah. tango or whatever, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. So, the final point I'd like to make to you is something about your own capacity for communicating in yourself while you're sexual, okay? Seems to me when you get sexual, you don't, you're just going through the motions, you don't, you expect to relax and all this, but you don't. Now, let me ask you a question. Would, would you ever tell Bob what to do in terms of how to help you get more excited? Well, no. I mean, it seems like a man should know that what you need is, is tenderness and, and gentleness mm -hmm. before and make you feel pretty and make you feel so you can lose yourself. Uh, I don't see why I, could, I have to say to Bob, you know, make me feel that way. I mean, that's it's like, a, I don't know, do this, do that. It's like a traffic cop or something. I, that upsets like you. you should feel time. that. Yes. If, if he really loved you, he could read your mind. That's, sometimes I'm not sure he does. Yeah, but, but you feel that way, do you not? Okay. Well, now, yes. tell me, do you ever ask him to scratch your back? <laughs> sure. Hmm? Or rub it. I mean, why is that, a, why is that legal day? and you can't ask him how to caress you sexually? Uh, sexually? Hmm? I, <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably be embarrassed to do that. No, you're, you're <laughs> smiling at the same time. I'll tell you why I bring it up. All right? All right. I think it's important for you to know that spontaneity and, you know, extra special romantic moments are really matters of luck over most relationships when time goes by and there are other things in life besides just you and your lover. In your marriage with a busy guy and you're busy with the kids, Perhaps the time for spontaneity is really going by for now. You're too damaged. You're not communicating enough. So how can he possibly understand you clearly unless you tell him where you are? Hmm? Similarly, if, if he had the problem, if he had the problem, he would have to tell you something about how to caress him, wouldn't he? How can you read his mind? Can you? I don't know. I thought I could. <laughs> I don't but know. can you really? No, I guess not. Okay. And this is an important area to think about for you right now. You've got a stereotype about sex that somehow good girls, you know, think a certain way. Okay? And pure love is magic and comes out a certain way. I would suggest that you're really acting towards yourself like your mother once did towards you. You know, shaking your fingers, saying you gotta be special. Don't dare be bad. Mm. Okay? How'd you feel talking today about it? Really relieved. 
Well, if I you can talk with me, what about the guy out there? <laughs> Possibility? Oh, I hope so. All right. Bring him in next week, all right? All right. We'll look at this matter from all the angles I've described. Good to see you. Good to see you. The interview that we have just observed can be divided into three parts. Establishing rapport, making an appraisal, and initiating therapeutic responses. Under rapport, we have to give the patient the feeling that we are on the same wavelength, that we understand the patient. Under appraisal, we have to pay particular attention to those nonverbal cues which allow us to infer those attitudes and feelings so important in our understanding the patient. The interaction between the patient and the counselor or physician is most important because it is through the feelings generated in the interaction that so much progress can be made in therapy. The strengths and weaknesses uh, of the patient must be understood because if the coping patterns are insufficient, if the patient's psychopathology and liabilities far outweigh those coping patterns, referral to a psychiatrist may be necessary. Now, this is a critical area of appraisal because every patient must be given the appropriate form of therapy. Initiating therapeutic response must go on during the very first session. We must educate the patient, not only because we must have the patient understand that we understand, but we must reduce the confusion which creates so much anxiety. Tension reduction is also necessary to increase communication. Motivation for change must go on right from the start because it is only through motivation for change that we can initiate and maintain the tempo of therapy. Now let's go to instant replay and examine these three parts of this initial interview. Well, now, Linda, tell me, how did you happen to come to see me? What, uh, what's the difficulty facing you? Well, it's, um, I guess the problem is sexual. Mm -hmm. I, um, went to see our uh, minister of our local church, and he suggested I get uh, some professional help, because I don't n quite know what to do about it. Um, how, uh, how did you feel coming in today to, uh, to talk about it? How do you feel being here? Well, I feel like it's really a necessity, and I really want to get help, and I really want to find out what's causing these problems, but mm -hmm. I, I have to admit I'm a little nervous, I guess. Okay, okay. Well, try and tell me, for starters, if you can, what is the current uh, dilemma? To establish rapport, the counselor must convey the sense that he understands the patient and is compassionately concerned. This reduces the embarrassment inevitably present in every patient with a sexual problem. Allowing the patient to ventilate feelings is a critical step in this process. Appraisal must include awareness of nonverbal cues. In addition to words and the way words are spoken, body language and facial expressions tell the interviewer many things about the patient's feelings. In this sequence, the patient opens her hands and reaches out to the therapist, indicating her appeal for understanding. Pounding her fist indicates the intensity of her feelings. She is really conveying more by her body movements than she is verbally. After you got into the marriage routine, you had your children pretty quick. I yeah. Mm -hmm. Born right away, I guess. Yes, the first child was born about... Uh, nine months, um, excuse me, <laughs> a year later. Okay. Interaction between patient and doctor 
usually provides useful cues in the appraisal. The obvious slip of the tongue, which you just heard, indicates the probability that conception occurred before her marriage. This may be highly significant. The interviewer has a choice between challenging the patient and letting the slip pass without remark. What are the implications for each choice? In making the appraisal in limited time, the doctor has a difficult choice between learning more about the patient's current life or learning more about her past. Often, as in this case, the interviewer wants to learn more about the connections between past and present. A response about her body image in the past naturally leads to a question about how she sees herself these days. How do you see yourself these days? Well, I, I know I'm an attractive woman, um, but I don't feel that way with Bob anymore. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's the problem. I even worry that maybe he would be interested in some other woman. I. Has this really come up? Uh... No, not really. It's just that I feel like if I can't respond to him the way I should, that it, he may get interested in someone else. Right. The therapist's face reveals his uncertainty about the direction to follow. If he had continued to explore her past, this is what would have happened. In terms of growing into a young woman, developing a figure and all, and beginning to be interested in guys, what was your response to that? Did you have any uh, emotional, say, uh, crises about growing? Were you extra heavy or extra thin or tell me something about that well i was pudgy as a little girl mm -hmm. and uh, about uh, 12 or 13 i really slimmed down and i i it was a good experience i remember liking to have a figure and i know my father always liked me to look pretty and he commented on it and i enjoyed that so you felt pretty good about yourself yeah. in that area correct yeah in watching the following sequence Note the patient's typical embarrassment. In sexual interviewing, it is usually helpful to ask about the patient's learning about masturbation before asking the details of actual behavior. How old were you when you first learned about things like masturbation? Oh, um, um, <laughs> I can't remember. Um, College, I guess, or reading about it. Well, as far as learning about it, really knowing about it, I guess, college, I, I suppose mm -hmm. I, I knew about it before. Did you have any experience with it when you were younger, before college? Uh, yeah, I guess. Now, you look a little anxious at this point. Well, it's a little embarrassing to talk about. And this is a pretty personal, touchy thing itself. Well, it's, it's just that it's kind of a funny topic. I mean, How do you mean? Well, it's, I don't know, it's always connected with uh, jokes or humor. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I suppose it has a distasteful connotation, too. To have, you, have you indulged in it at all since you've been married? Rarely. Does it have, do you have any feelings about that? I'm sure I still have the feeling that it's... Uh, I, not bad. I mean, I, I realize from reading that it's not. Intellectually. Yeah. But there's a but, quality yeah, about you that it's, it's not well, so Well, it's good. not as good as, as the other thing can be. That's okay. what's important. Now, take me to the present day. What goes on today, these days, concerning when romance and sex are in the air? What, what occurs? Paint a word picture for me, if you can. Nothing. <laughs> we often unduly emphasize maladaptive responses. It is even more important to find out the patient's strengths and assets. The patient's response indicates helplessness. She underplays her real strengths in an effort to gain the help of the doctor. Well, as I say, we spend the evening with the kids, after we get the kids to bed, mm -hmm. he's usually very tired. He watches television. What's going on in his mind if it's going to be sex? What, what, do you, what do you think he thinks? He gives me a look, you know. 
Okay. And Raises what, his eyebrow. And your response is what? Well, it used to be, uh, it used to, he didn't just give me a look. I mean, okay. he would touch me, he would tell me I look nice, or he would do something to make me really feel that way. Mm -hmm. In initiating a therapeutic response, education is used to build the patient's self-esteem and to give her a sense that the doctor is able to help. Well, where did you get the impression you were frigid? How did you happen to use that label? Well, <laughs> from reading, and I know in one of our arguments, Bob said I was frigid, and he said, well, all my friends think you're so attractive and so sexy, but you're not really. Which I... But you have had climaxes. You are yes. orgastic, and you have been in the past in better settings. Correct? Yes. That's right. Well, that doesn't qualify you for being frigid. Well, it's been a long time, though. It's I mean, okay. Can't, you can't become frigid. No, you really can't. Not if you've been orgastic. It's a bad term. Okay? So leave it in quotes, you know, and take it off wherever you're wearing it and give it to someone <laughs> else, all right? If, if he really loved you, he could read your mind. That's, sometimes I'm not sure he does. But, but you feel that way, do you not? Okay. Well, now, yes. tell me, do you ever ask him to scratch your back? <laughs> sure. Hmm? Or rub it. I mean, why is that, why is that legal day? and you can't ask him how to caress you sexually? Uh, sexually? Hmm? <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably be embarrassed to do that. Now you're, you're <laughs> smiling at the same time. Ventilation of feelings and the establishment of rapport has reduced tension in the patient. The reduction of tension enables her to learn more effectively. In sexual problems, the partner is always involved in some way. Motivation for change involves not only reorientation of her perception about herself and the knowledge that her partner must be included in the process of change, but confidence that the doctor is willing and able to help. So how can he possibly understand you clearly unless you tell him where you are? Hmm? Similarly, if, if he had the problem, if he had the problem, he would have to tell you Something about how to caress him, wouldn't he? How can you read his mind? Can you? I don't know. I thought I could. I don't but know. can you really? No, I guess not. Okay. And this is an important area to think about for you right now. You've got a stereotype about sex that somehow good girls, you know, think a certain way. Okay? And pure love is magic and comes out a certain way. I would suggest that you're really acting towards yourself like your mother once did towards you. you know, shaking your finger and saying, you gotta be special. Don't dare be bad. Mm. Okay? How'd you feel talking today about it? Really relieved. Well, if I you have... can talk with me, what about the guy out there? Possibility? Oh, I hope so. All right. Bring him in next week, all right? All right. We'll look at this matter from all the angles I've described. Good to see you. Good to see you.